Relative Dimension presents Dungeons and Dragons Tomb of Annihilation. This was originally played and recorded live on Twitch and not intended to be an audio release. All right, I think we are live. Hello, everybody. Howdy, of course. The stream seems to be delayed still. So when last we met, you all had traveled north out of the marsh and into the forest, where you found a castle that seemed to be inhabited by goblins and hobgoblins. On the way there, you met with a patrol and dispatched the patrol. And that night, they seemed to be aware that that patrol had not returned yet, so they sent a few people out to explore. You slept and waited until morning. When it was light enough, you approached the castle, Twillin changing into the form of a spider, a giant wolf spider, infiltrated the castle enough to hear some gruff voices talking about a prisoner, but uh, also heard some stone sliding when they were saying that they should deal with the prisoner. But that was it. They left then, everybody then went around to the north of the castle where there was some debris and a hole that they used to get into the castle. Soon after that, they found some hobgoblins, I want to say, that were kind of on guard and heard somebody not sneaking so well. And while one of them engaged the intruders, the other one, probably not the best of judgment, went to another door and opened it up, which unleashed an owlbear. The owlbear, having not eaten in a while, decided that the hobgoblin would make a good first meal, and then proceeded to try to make meals out of the rest of the party, but managed to get stuck into a narrow space, and it was defeated after that. Meanwhile, the two gnomes went into the room where the bugbear and a drow were trying to escape down a secret passage. The drow did escape, the bugbear stopped to engage, and while they were fighting them, the drow was down doing something. After dispatching the bugbear, the group decided to explore the castle a bit, which gave the drow time to do what he wanted and escape, which they found out later was murdering the prisoners. Nobody knows why exactly, but um, luckily... The, their employer, Sindra Sylvain, an arch, arch mage, had provided a scroll case with the note to open in case of an emergency, and inside there were two resurrection, no, raised dead scrolls. So they raised her from the dead, traveled back to town, and that's where we ended the prequel. This is a year later. I was supposed to do that. Yeah. Doodly do, doodly do. So during that year, you guys can discuss that later amongst yourselves if you want to around the campfire. But for the past several days, the talk of the streets and taverns has all been all about a so-called death curse. A wasting disease afflicting everybody who's ever been raised from the dead. Victims grow thinner and weaker each day, slowly but steadily sliding towards the death they once denied. When they finally succumb, they can't be raised and neither can anyone else, regardless of whether they've ever received that miracle in the past. Temples and scholars of divine magic are at a loss to explain a curse that has affected the entire region, and possibly the entire world. All of you recently received a summons via message spell ascending to the home of Sindra Sylvain, your former employer. She has, uh, went into seclusion several months ago, and nobody had seen or heard from her there. Formerly, she was an adventurer and a merchant. At the door, a uniformed attendant leads you up a grand staircase to the third floor, then ushers you into a wood-paneled room with a fireplace, comfortable chairs, and a heavy table bearing goblets and bottles of wine. The darkly hung panels... Sorry, the darkly paneled walls are hung with maps and sea charts, racks, shelves, cabinets, and hundreds or more of rolled up maps and charts and maybe scrolls. In the room, a person is seated in an overstuffed chair near the fire. 
you cannot discern gender or who it is because the only only the person's head emerges from it under a heavy blanket draped over the chair and an embroidered hood and silver mask conceal the wearer's face and it speaks help yourselves to wine and seat yourselves friends it has been a long time since i have seen you um <clears throat> you don't sound so good are you okay no that is why i have summoned you i see joe have we met anybody that had the disease before this no okay just heard rumors and people talking about it I'm dreadfully sorry for your condition. I feel somewhat responsible. Is there, is there anything I can do to help? Yes, there is, actually. And we shall get to that. Uh, but please, she gestures to the table, make yourselves comfortable first. And the uh, uniformed attendant that had brought you in uh, takes her a steaming mug. And she waits until you get, you know, settled and comfortable. Seated on a chair, practically perched on the edge, waiting to hear what she has to say. Here's is wandering around, wide-eyed at the, all the maps around the room, taking in as much as he can. So let me first confirm that this death curse is true, and it has struck me. Oh. But it, it, it is not your fault. I, I have died more than the occasion in which you found me. <laughs> My contacts in the Harpers have learned that the cause of this death curse is a necromantic artifact called the Soulmonger, they say. And according to their sources, this Soulmonger is somewhere on the peninsula of Chult. She uh, weakly kind of gestures to one of the maps on a wall that shows the region far to the south of the Sword Coast and Baldur's Gate where you currently are. Mm -hmm. And it's not a very good map, but there is, uh, Chult is notated on the map. That appears to be a very significant distance. Yes, well, that I can take care of if you are, are willing to investigate this for me. Uh, the peninsula is ringed with mountains and choked with rainforests, enormous reptiles, savage goblins, an army of undead prowled jungles and ruins from what I hear. Uh, mapping the place has always been nigh impossible, and nothing is known about the region's current geography beyond a few miles from the coast. I, if you are willing to do this, though, I, I don't... I don't know how long I have left. Clerics cannot help. They are stymied by what is happening. And I, I do wish to both pay you and help help ensure this... Uh, hold on one second. The stream went dark for me. I'm not... Is it dark for those of you in the watching? I'm not watching. No, there's people in chat... Okay. I, I still see it. That's odd. Okay. I refreshed it and it, okay. It was just weird at first that it kind of did that. It just didn't like you. That's no, all. it did not like me. So, I, I wish to both pay you and assist in your success. Uh, so, before we go, I, I have in my time, as you know, collected several magic items and things, and I do wish to uh, give each of you one of them for your journey on this, Ooh. this into the jungles of Chult. Uh, I have not had need of collecting armor, so I don't have any armor, but I, I do have um, a, a nice collection, some rare, some are uncommon, even a few weapons. So if if you wish, I can have Lenar uh, show you some, and you may have your each of you may take your pick. Of course, Thrax yeah. looks sad yeah, yeah, yeah. about armor. But, uh, uh, yeah, oh, I'm gonna oh, kind of oh. look at the rest of them. Uh, don't 
don't believe any, everyone has agreed to go as of yet. Has everyone actually agreed to going to this? Can I, I certainly here? go. Uh, yes, um, Twillin? Uh, you're dying from a disease from which you can't come back from. Instead of asking us to save your life, you're asking us to go and get an artifact and pay us with a magic item? Uh, this, this artifact is why I cannot be saved. Uh, if you find it and destroy it, uh, my contacts say that uh, the dead shall be raised again, or raisable. So it has to be retrieved right before here. you die? Uh, retrieved? No. I don't know if it can be retrieved. Just put an end to it. So we need to do that Him before to... you die? If you can, uh, I don't know where on Chult it is, and it's a big peninsula, so hopefully... Who else is trying uh, to destroy this? Um, well, to be honest, I have sent a few groups before you, and I have no contact with them anymore. As to anybody else, I don't know. Does anybody else know about this and ascending? Your, your I mean, guess I'm is as good as mine. Fairly widespread problem. People would be trying to do something about it. Okay. This this time, though, if, if you do agree to go, I am going to go with you and spend some time with a friend I have in Port Nanzaru. Ah, yes. Friends, friends are good in time of sickness. Perhaps they can help ease the passage for you. But Why... I might we be able to do something that the people you sent before could? You saved me once. I have hopes that maybe you can do so again. Okay. Why would we not, though? Is but there... Would we not save her? I'm, I wasn't asking <laughs> if we wouldn't save her. I, I was as, just wondering why it wasn't like a sense of, like, save me now. As for the urgency of the matter, like I said, it's a large jungle peninsula. Don't... Don't concern yourselves too far on my behalf. I, I have lived a long life, and if it ends because of this, at least I have done my part to help end it for others. If if we find this artifact and destroy it, would that mean we could bring you back even if you died in the meantime? I would hope so. I guess we'll find why, out. Why is this happening? I mean, is like, somebody using this artifact for some purpose? We haven't been able to discover that. Several divinations have been cast, but the info is very vague. I'm surprised they've managed to track down a general region for it. So this was related to when we saved you the first time, then? No. This started perhaps... A little under a month ago, and for a few of you, you started having dreams a little under a month ago. You know who you are. So, did you do something different in that time period? No, just one day I woke up and, um, well, the first few days I didn't realize anything was wrong. After about a week, I started to feel a little weak and went to a friend of mine that is a, a cleric. And that's when she seemed to notice that there was... It's hard to say. She, she described it as a kind of a life-draining effect, but a very, very slow one. Through uh, talking to other people, we managed to connect it to anybody that has been dead in the past and raised from it. But we also notice that now anybody that dies now cannot be raised from the dead. This this artifact seems to have uh, some type of overreaching power over that somehow. That is why it must be destroyed. It does make the world a lot more dangerous, doesn't it? So are we like going to alert the temples and let the, the clergy know? so that they can raise an army or something? I mean, is there a reason why there aren't being forces marshaled? I am one person. I can't answer for why temples and 
those with armies may or may not do what they do. Mm-hmm. Did you have do they, are they aware of this artifact or is it something they just don't believe? Disbelief probably runs through some people. It doesn't nobody that uh those that have not been dead in the past don't seem to be suffering any ill effects. Hmm. Mm. But the the question is why something is messing with the path of the dead. Something is messing with the path of the dead. Yes. Something is. Yeah, I you think all the clergy would be up, you know, preparing armies and stuff. Sending sending an army all the way down there to face off with the unknown is not an easy task for any church, especially to convince yeah, their... Right. Uh, isn't this their bread and butter? I mean, isn't, like, raising rich people, like, how they get most of their coffers filled? I... Not sure a lot of rich people go out and get themselves killed that easily. Uh, Thrak raises a hand. Yes. Shulk own country? It's not my country, but yes, it is, uh, it does not answer to the lords of Waterdeep or any others from the north. Is there some sort of that government or anything down there? Uh, there used to be a queen. But the royal family was destroyed long ago. The rumors say that even their gods have abandoned them. Now there there will be uh, temples to Sunni and others, but they are more for people visiting and not the locals per- exactly. Hmm. Sounds highly unnatural. Yeah, it does. Here, she... Uh, kind of to the side rolls over a uh, kind of a rolling table a little closer to you. I have this map and you may take it with you. It is uh, the most complete map that I am aware of and it took Ooh. some some getting some work to get a hold of. Please give it a moment to load. Loading. Oh, that's hilarious. It actually loaded pictures and now it's whiting them out afterwards. Yeah. But there are no details. Ooh, that looks... The interior, we do not know anything about. What we know is marked here. There are some uh, ruins that we are aware of. Like Mesro was a city long ago that has just vanished. Um, Mbala is somewhat inside. We know roughly where it is, but nothing more concrete than that. Where I will be taking us is Port, Port Nianzaru, which is on the northern end. That is the, the only remaining center of civilization, I guess. There were others in the past, but a lot has happened since then. So what is known about this artifact? The only thing we know, mm-hmm. and not even this do we know for sure, is that... It is doing something to prevent souls from willingly re-entering their body when the right magic is cast. Do we know what shape that Even, artifact is? No. Hmm. Even things like uh, spells to speak with the dead will not contact anybody if they've been dead too long. Oh. Any legends about it? As far as anybody can tell, this is a new thing. So, how does it have a name? Um, personally, I th- I think some bards were clever and decided to give it one. <laughs> I mean, soul, soul monger does sound kind of fearful. Either that, or like a fishmonger, somebody who deals in souls. Some things I can tell you, though. It is very hot in the jungle. So you will need to make sure you drink lots of water. Heavy armor may hinder you. It may not be something you wish to wear if you can help it. Also be wary of the water in the rivers and insects. Insects? Yes. uh, Various diseases can be spread via the insects. Oh. That's good to know. So, 
Will you undertake this mm. task for me? Reason why not? Definitely, he's looking into. Um, uh, looking into uh, Rack actually draws his great sword and kneels on one knee and states simply that Kelnvor has already charged me with this quest. And with that, he stands up, puts his sword away, points in the direction of where he's supposed to go. Lenar, please, if you will. Yes, madam. If you will follow me. And this is where you get to choose an item of rare or uncommon or common. Let me know what it may be, because certain things she does not have, but for the most part, she has a lot. And if oh, you want to oh, oh, pick, that sounds yeah. really cool. If you want to take a, a little time picking, uh, do I have a list? Let me see. I'll just really quickly browse through all the magic items. In the yeah, game. do you have um, either in D&D Beyond should actually have a list under, what is it, game rules, right? Magic items? Uh, equipment. Magic items, I can paste that into, let's say, Discord. But yeah, D if you want D&D Beyond, you can actually uh, sort by uncommon, rare, common. And what level does she have available? Mostly common, uncommon, and rare. So nothing very rare or legendary or above. And even a few of the rares might not be available. And no armor. She doesn't need armor as an archmage but yeah you can take some time doing that if you want you don't have to pick right this minute we can proceed um, okay um, yes I, I think I will will be joining on this one as well anything that messes with the path of death should not be allowed to stand so after you do pick your item Lenar leads you back to her uh, she, and helps her to stand up, and she gathers you all in a circle. Now, I have teleported us all once before, so this may be a little unnerving for you, but we shall be there momentarily. And she begins casting a spell. Thrak does not look thrilled again. <laughs> all right. After the moment of casting the teleportation spell... There is a handout visible to you guys, just mm -hmm. a general image of what you can expect later on. So the first thing that hits you is the heat and the humidity. Um, you appear in a tropical city under the blazing sun. Familiar sounds of a harbor, creaking rope, slapping waves, heavy barrels rolling across cobblestones, mingle with voices shouting and cursing in an unfamiliar language filled with clicks, inhalations, sing-songy words that make it sound almost musical. The aroma of unfamiliar spices and tropical fruits mixes with the wharfside smells of fish, tar, and canvas. Um, everybody at this point make me a perception check with disadvantage. As you gain your bearings. Uh, where's my... Hmm. Alright. Ten. Ah. Oh, looks There's like I need to roll twice, because the... Uh, so you can roll two dice, right? Yeah, the, the plugin lets you set roll type. It's a second option. Yeah. Ask every time, disadvantage, disadvantage, or normal roll. I got an eight. I just do it automatically. Where do you change that? I thought I had it set for that before. Under the you that on? I see it. Right. I wonder why it changed. In the plugin, you mean? Yeah. Uh, there was an update to the plugin, so maybe it reset something. All right. Thrak with a three. Uh, Nexus, you are fine. So Thrak, Malwin, and Twillin. So Nexus and Ears. Um, it takes you a moment, you know, you're getting your bearings, uh, listening around, and you hear some shouts and talking and conversation. And um, almost a moment later, you realize that somebody is shouting at you. And you turn around in time to uh, see two Triceratops running right at you. And you guys can easily get out of the way. The other three don't notice that quite in time. And I need dexterity saving throws from you each. The DC is 8. So Thrak, Malwin, and Twillin. Oh, okay. 
Welcome to the city. Get trampled by a Triceratops. Nice. It's eight because that's what you're going to be eating. I got a 15. You are fine. You don't gracefully get out of the way, but you do manage to jump out of the way in time. Okay, all of you do manage. I got a 12. And Syndra seems to already be on the side. Oh, I forgot to warn you about the dinosaur races. And while you guys are on the side, a Allosaurus runs by. It's a race? And, and then a few others. Yes, as the, as you get back up now that you're on the side, you can see that these dinosaurs have numbers painted on the sides of them in different colors, and they are each being ridden by somebody. Wow. That's awesome. That's cruel. Huh? Abusing the creatures like that. Abuse. Okay. Never ridden a horse? Twillian looks incredibly horrified. <laughs> he, he, you, you, you know, like, like in the the waves of shock that pass through him at the mere suggestion that he consider that is just like horrific. Ah, suit yourself. And then he like backs away from you slowly. The cultures of others, uh, sadly, do not always agree with ours, do they, Twillin? Well, obviously. So now that you avoided being trampled and you get your bearings a little bit, Port, Port Nyanzaru is an explosion of color. Buildings are painted in bright shades of blue, green, orange, salmon, pink, or their walls are adorned with murals portraying giant reptiles and mythical heroes. Every building sports baskets and clay urns of colorful flowers or is draped in earthy and leafy flowering vines. There's minstrels in bright clothing adorned with feathers and shells performing on street corners, multicolored pennants and sun awnings fluttering atop the city walls. Crowds of children dressed in feathered hats and capes race past you, chasing the dinosaurs, squealing in delighted terror as another street performer, costumed as a big-toothed lizard, stomps and roars behind them. The whole city seems to be a bustling, sweating, laughing, swearing, and singing... <sighs> It has been some time since I've been here. Uh, I recommend that you secure rooms for yourselves. I, I would suggest either the Thundering Lizard, if you're looking for a raucous time, or Kaya's House of Repose, if you would like a good, quiet night's sleep. Both of them are, uh, she kind of gestures in a direction, near the Red Bazaar. Uh, I am going to go visit a friend of mine, Wakanga Otamu. If you need me for anything, you can search for me there. So there's people about? There are people all over the place, yes. Twilon walks up to one and asks him if he's seen where the soulmonger is. He kind of uh, looks at you, mutters something in a language you don't understand. And Try then... again and gobble. That gets a response, but not a favorable response. He kind of uh, steps back briefly, and then kind of looks, uh, kind of leans to the sides and looks, at, you know, around you. And then uh, he tries in Elven. Does anybody speak Elven? <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently, um, I do. <laughs> So in, Elvish. in Elvish, he says, uh, You don't look like Goblin, but you speak like Goblin. Twillin doesn't know what he said. Shrugs. Oh, I assure you we are not Goblins. Oh, you understand me. Good, good. Uh, what was the little one saying? I'm not sure. I think he said something in Goblin. I'll translate. What, what did you say? I asked him where the soulmonger is. Oh, well, I'm... Sure, he probably doesn't know, but who knows? Maybe he'll direct us the quickest way there, and we'll be done by the afternoon. Heard it. Pardon me, good sir. Do you know of an artifact known as the Soulmonger? The Soulmonger? No, I do not. What no? pray tell is this artifact, this Soulmonger? Ah, I haven't had a good description of it yet. I don't think he, she has given us a good description of it, has she? No. No, just just a uh, name that. Uh, May not be actually attached to it. May have just been attached to it by some uh, over-ear bards. Um, uh, it's uh, object of a quest, but uh, I'm 
Sure, you, you know nothing about it as of yet. Perhaps someday you will. Someday you'll hear the stories of how Tyr reached out to those of his who were uh, blessed in his sight to guide them to a world-saving quest that made everything better for, well, so many... Did you say where it is? In the wor- what, what's that? Oh, um, no. No, he didn't. <laughs> Keep in mind, Twilin's like, like, briefly tall, so he's like, like, below you two going, looking between you. <laughs> yeah, we're just like waiting and like, they're having a very long conversation. Does he actually know something good? This is gonna be good. <laughs> Not. Uh, but uh, do you know where a Temple of Tear might be in town? Tear, no. I do know where there is a Temple of Gond and, uh, one of Savras? Uh. But no tear, huh? No. That's a shame. We'll have to do something about that. Ah. Uh, no, he doesn't know anything about the uh, the soulmonger, but uh, he does have some uh, interesting ideas about what we can do to help make the uh, city a better place once we've returned with the soulmonger. Let me see. Uh, well, let us now? find this inn at least and get myself settled until the lady returns, and then maybe she has at least a, a beginning direction for us. Cinder's so coming back? I'm sorry? She went to visit her friend. Is she coming back? Uh, ye- I would assume so. She said she would uh, to, to have us go to the inn, so I would assume that means that she plans on returning and talking to us? No, she said if you need her, you can find her there. Oh, that's what she said. Okay, okay. Oh, well, then we should just decide on what we want to do next. Uh, maybe we should spread out and ask more people. There are a lot of people to ask. Here, okay. meanwhile, cl- climbed up to a higher vantage point to watch the race. They, uh, so okay, he... so when you teleported in, you were uh, on this map, kind of in this area over here, where the ping is. Almost dead center. Yeah, kind of uh, just on the upper side of the harbor ward there. The dinosaurs raced um, this way and down. Now on this map, north faces to the right, so they went south and then east, and soon out of sight. Okay, um, where do we think the inn is? Next to you, uh, she said it was in the red by the red bazaar, but that's all she said. She kind of gestured vaguely eastward, towards the bottom of the map. Hmm. Yeah, towards the bottom of the map. Now where you are, there is a hill, so this area here is raised. And you can see the bridges that kind of link to these other areas that are raised over here mm. and here. And when the uh, the guy here that was being talked to talked to, mentioned the temple of Gond and Savras, he kind of gestured behind you, so towards this hill area over this way. Oh yeah, those temples aren't important to anybody though, so I didn't even bother translating that. If it's not here, it's nothing. Uh, I'd go and ask a bunch of animals, but I don't think they'd help us find an artifact. We could just split up and try to find each other at the inn a little later. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose that sounds reasonable. Joe, so do you need mm. us to like detail it out? But basically, Twilin's going to wander off asking people if they've okay the artifact. Uh, which one was the quiet inn? The quiet inn was Kaya's house of repose. Yeah, I, that's where I, I'm going. Yeah, I'm following. Nexus. Okay, so you go into the inn. Twillin is going to ask questions. What about Ears and Malwin? If everybody, or if majority of people are heading over to the inn, um, he'll also head over there. But also at the same time, he will start keeping an eye out for any of the signs of the seedy underbelly of the city. Okay. Because that's his thing. Uh, that he's familiar with, so getting the lay of the land from that perspective. Not li- looking for anything specific, but just orienting himself. I think I'll be heading to the uh, the inn with the others. Seems like a solid choice of uh, destinations. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, for everybody but the <laughs> Hey, quick question of the magic items. Uh... A bunch of things listed are wondrous items. Is that are some of those on the list, or is it? Yes, they should still have a rarity, I think, right? 
Yep. Yeah, wondrous items are, are available. Some, like I said, there's going to be a few that aren't, but let me know. So have like a list of two or three just in case the first one gets shot down. Too many options, but we'll figure it out. Okay. I rolled 3d20 for ears, because you're looking for the CD underbelly. Twilling, because you're looking around to ask people. And the group going to the inn, and I got the same number for all three of you. Not sure what that means, but okay. Uh, all three of you got a 13. So just the fact that you all got the same number. All right, so Twillin, you are walking around asking people. Uh, a lot of people do not know where a soulmonger is. Some people claim that they can tell you for 50 gold, but it's very obvious that they're just trying to get your money. A few people recommend going to the Temple of Savras because they are the ones that are fortune tellers and diviners and they can cast magics to help learn the locations of lost things and stuff like that. Yeah, I kind of figure if uh, it was locatable by magic, then uh, Syndra would have already tried that. Uh, you do see there are flowers and green plants and vines growing everywhere. There are people selling different types of flowers, uh, types of berries that they promise will reinvigorate you. Um. Okay, they, uh, when Twillin sees somebody about to buy something and he knows the plant doesn't have that property, he will point it out, but otherwise he, um. you know, he's more interested in just bugging people. Roll me a uh, nature check. Okay. Oh, wow. I only got a five? I must be really unfamiliar to the plants. Yeah, area. these berries you have never seen before. <laughs> okay. But the person selling them is talking about how they can be eaten raw, or crushed, and added to a drink to dull the bitterness. Uh, if you if you eat at least ten of them, it reinvigorates you and and makes you resistant to diseases and poisons for the next day. Okay, he's not in the market right now. He'll remember, but I mean, uh, ears. Wandering around, there is definitely um, a black market here. You learn that most of the goods and services and, and merchant, merchant, merchantary, mercantile, whatever, is done in the market ward. And the different mm -hmm. merchant princes each control a different aspect of things. Um, like... A familiar name, Watanga Otamu, controls the sale of potions and magical items. Mm -hmm. um, everybody in the market ward that sells those is a direct employee of him, and anybody else that's not that is caught tends to be either uh, killed, arrested, ran out of town. They are very, very harsh with their penalties, but they also seem to be very lax before you get to those harsh penalties, if that makes sense. You know, a first-time offense, they might just confiscate all your stuff and that's it. But mm -hmm. if they catch you doing it more than once, then mm -hmm. you, you hear about a thing called Executioner's Row. And what you learn about that seems to be that it is a pit that they throw prisoners into on one end. And if they can get to the other end and out... They are cleared of their crimes and free to go. But inside these pits are often dinosaurs that haven't been eaten, velociraptors, things like that. Mm. So, And also, uh, thieving is heavily frowned upon, so it is not something openly engaged in. But mm -hmm. there are still pickpockets now and then. You do occasionally catch somebody kind of reaching towards your purse, but they are not good enough to get by your awareness. Mm -hmm. And everybody else getting to the inn. On your way there, there is a... Um, since the three of you are traveling together, as you turn a corner, you are um, kind of stopped by a female Chulton who has uh, another person with her. And in common... She kind of looks at you. You three, you look capable. 
I need some assistance if you are willing to help. I, uh, somebody made a bet and they haven't paid on their debt. If you come with me to help collect it, I'll give you 10% of what is collected. The debt is 500 gold, so uh, you're in for 50 gold if we can collect it all. What do you say? Hmm. Collecting debts, huh? Not really what we're in town for. What kind of debt is this? He made a bet on whether somebody would get free in Executioner's Run two days ago. And he lost. And of course, when I try to find him to collect his debt, and she pulls out like a little wooden chit with some scratches on it that doesn't really mean anything to you guys. Uh, he cannot be found, or rather he can be found, but he refuses to pay me, and my guard, she kind of glances over her shoulder at the other person with her, doesn't think he is capable of collecting this debt without assistance. Hmm. 50 gold could be useful in getting supplies, although I don't think it's necessary at this point. Hmm. Well, it it does seem like if, if someone made a bet and is now uh, not following through on it, it does seem like uh, perhaps we should uh, oh, step in to, to set things right. Hmm. I suppose. Sure, let's... Let's see how this plays out. I am curious to see and this. And I think person. to my think to myself that uh, maybe if this person isn't on the level, then uh, we definitely need to set things right before they uh, find somebody else to do it. I suppose. Is it agreed? Yes. Excellent. Uh, follow me. And she turns the corner. Um, walks across the street a little bit. The buildings are kind of tightly packed here. And into an inn. Uh, not the tav- not the uh, place where you were. Sorry, a tavern, then not the inn. And she points to a side table where there's a bunch of people nearby. Uh, looks like there is arm wrestling going on right now. So it's very loud and rowdy. And there is one person who is bigger than most of the others sitting there. Who seems to be winning. That is him. Wait, what does this guy look like? He looks big. He is... Uh... Human. Also Chalton. That there is Taban. He was once the champion in the gladiatorial pits. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I can understand why your uh, guard there thought he may need a little assistance with this one. Yes. I I begin walking towards him. I am going to cast... Ah, what is that spell? It's a very useful spell. Guidance on you. I tap you on your shoulder. You've got this, I say. With tears, luck. (laughs) It's going to be interesting. Um, Okay. Are you approaching the table, like, boldly and just striding over? Yes. As you get a little closer, he notices you. Ah, lads, lads, make room, make room. You, are you here to challenge Taban? And he kind of holds his arm up on the table. No, but I accept your challenge. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I like you. Sit. I'll sit down. What is wager? Kind of, uh looks you over. You approach the table, you name the wager. I win, you pay. And I point at the person who directed us here. He looks over, and uh, his expression changes. No, that that bet was defaulted. There was cheating involved. There was no cheating, and you know it. Cheating? What kind of cheating? Cheating of the magic sort. Somebody from the sidelines up above helped. It was a fair bet, and you know it. Nobody interfered. Um, Regardless of that, though, you did just tell my friend here that he could name the the, the wager, and you agreed. 
So he's named it. You need to but put, you need to hold to this one. But cheating. If there was cheating, I don't know if this is a valid bet that we can back up here. That wouldn't be appropriate. Does it matter at now, this what, point? Now, what sort of bet was this? What were, the, what were the terms of the bet? There was a prisoner who was thrown in, and I bet that he wouldn't make it halfway through. But he made it to the end because somebody helped him by distracting the raptors. Does this sort of distraction happen often? Is this a regular occurrence that people from the outside throw things or uh, attack the uh, contestants in the in the pit? No. If they are caught doing it, they are thrown in themselves. So was this person well, thrown in? Well, that does sound like... No. The result of a spell is easy to see, but the caster of it was not. Hmm. But you named your wager. Um, Thrak, roll me a persuasion. Don't forget your plus four for uh, guidance. Or your d4, or plus rather. plus d4, rather. Yeah, plus d4. So, 12. I would like to do an insight check, if I could, to see who is being truthful. Okay. Something I'm actually skilled in. It works. Good lord. As far as you can tell, they are both being truthful. How's this? If you can beat me two out of three times, I will pay this debt. Well, based on roll 20, I'm guaranteed to lose, but hey, let's try. <laughs> <laughs> So these will each be straight strength rolls, contested strength rolls. Remember, there are two inspiration tokens on the table. That's right, there is. It's totally not cheating to use those to win in a contest. Nope, <laughs> not cheating at all. You are inspired. That's a difference. Would you like me to roll? Yep, roll, and I shall roll. Uh, I honestly can't tell what in the world it just did. Get a two roll working. Oh, that was you who rolled that, that, that. Just rolled that. Yeah, that was him. So, is um, that your eleven? Yeah, I think I'm gonna use the inspiration die just okay. to tie him. So after the fact, then it's a re-roll. Yeah, if you do it after, it's a re-roll. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, nice. All right, it's you know you guys are straining there for for a few seconds, kind of going back and forth. He seems to be testing you, letting you you know take the lead briefly before asserting himself, but then you snap his arm to the table. Ha! Huh. You are very strong. Oh, I need to win these next two. I have to carry a lot. And for the second one, go ahead and make your roll. If you want to do inspiration, though, you got to do it beforehand. Oh. Although... Does that, does that give him advantage? Is that what it is? It gives him advantage, but, you know, unless there's something where you benefit from advantage... Yeah, there, there's you. no point in waiting. You might, as, I mean, don't don't do the don't use it yet. Just roll yeah, and see I'm what you get. To. Yeah. Oh, I, I I don't get this. I really don't. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get lucky and he rolls bad. We ain't that lucky. <laughs> no, you might as well. I, do I, that I, I'm going to default and let him win this one because that's a natural twenty. Yeah. Well, no, he he's using the sixteen, right? Or does yeah. he have advantage? No, sixteen. He's using the 16, but still, that's that's a tougher one for you to on a reroll. So yeah. So again, there's there's that straining bit, but this one he does it easily. Like he gauged your strength on the first one, and now he knows just how much to apply. And yeah, looks like said, we are oh. tied. <laughs> All right, one more. Go ahead and make your roll. There we go. I think I'm gonna stick to that. Nice. Finally, he does roll low. <laughs> he does roll low. <laughs> no, I meant you, not him. <laughs> this one, you know, he, he gets his arm up there, and almost like you were playing with him the first time, you know, the second time when, no, the first time when you won, and then he won the second one, it's almost like it was a fluke, you know. He doesn't get any progress at all. He's straining the whole time as you're just inching him back, and back, and at the end he... <sighs> you are strong. Well, suppose I did agree to this. I'm getting comments from the peanut gallery. I heard that talent comment. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but... He, he stands up, kind of brushes himself off, and reaches into a uh, 
side pouch, or a, sorry, a side pocket in his his shirt, and pulls out a pouch, and then he he dumps them out onto the table, and what he dumps out are uh, ten gemstones. This is what I have. Kalahu, is it agreeable? And she walks over and looks at it. That should just about cover it. And she grabs the pouch and loads nine of them into the pouch and then slides one to Thrak. I pick it up and then I hand it to Nexus. And then I pull out a gold coin of my own and hand it to uh, the person. No, For no, the challenge. No. For the challenge. Instead, I must redeem myself. Would you like the assistance of a gladiator while you are here? I pull out three gold coins at that point and hand it to him. Yes, and there is your pay for the day. Oh, no, no, no pay. This is my honor at stake now. <laughs> I put the gold coins away and shrug. <laughs> Um, I will look at the 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 uh, uh, the ladies. Uh, I believe that is uh, sufficient. Then. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good. Um, I do have a question for you. Maybe you can actually assist us in another way if you don't mind. Yes. Um, we're actually here looking for something, uh, and an oh, um, an old artifact. Likely more rumors than anything else. But uh, geez, now I forget the name of it. What's it called again? Soulmonger. Yeah, that's right. The the Soulmonger. Have you heard of this? She thinks about it. I... No. Yes. No. I heard somebody mention that name in passing. I think it was... Oh, there, there, was, there was a woman, I think. Didn't get a good look at her. I, I didn't think of anything about it beforehand, but now that you mention it, too... That's all I remember is that she was asking somebody about it, but that's all I know. How long ago? Two days, maybe. Maybe yes, mm. yesterday. Interesting. Thank you. Where was this? It was it a was, bar, a, a temple? No, no it was uh, at the last uh, executioner's run. They were standing there watching. That That is all I know. Okay, thank you. Is well, it, we were is heading it to something. The end, so. uh, something I should be concerned about. Perhaps I can yeah. listen in the future. Oh, well, if you find anything, uh, any reliable information about it, we would definitely be interested. It's. Uh, you see, I'm on a, a quest to find it. Uh, it may help to uh, save a a dear old friend's life. Well, if if I hear about it, I shall. Let you know where where will you be staying, so I can get word to you. We'd already picked an inn, hadn't we? Yeah, the end oh, just on the way to the end or something. I know. Yeah, the repose inn. I don't know. It's the the nice end that's supposed to be quiet. Kaya's house of repose. Oh, yes, Kaya's. Okay. Yes, that's the one. I know where Kaya's is. Okay. Yeah, so we will be there. So if you do hear of anything, please let us know. Of course, of course. But we should take our leave now. Um, sir, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your... Uh, what was your name again, sir? The Gladiator. The Gladiator. I forgot his name already. I'm bad at names. Taban. Ah, Taban. Uh, would you like to escort us to, the, uh, to, to this end, please? It would be my honor. Thank you. And uh, he stands Speaking up and honor, starts to... I've... Go ahead. Speaking of honor, I've, I've heard there is no Temple of Tear in this town. So you may not have heard the good word. Temple of Tyr? Who is Tyr? Ah, I'm glad you've asked. And I'll spend the rest of the walk to the inn in telling him all about Tyr. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Next is just shaking her head. I'm going to uh, <laughs> lean heavy on to the, uh, the, uh, you know, the battle-hardened nature of uh, Tyr's life so to uh, perhaps uh, invoke more interest in this man. I think this Tyr would be... Not as great as Ubtau. Oh. Ouch. Oh. Well, Ubtau perhaps watches you should tell over me the about jungles. Us. Perhaps you should tell me about Ubtau. Ubtau watches over the jungles. His symbols are that of the maze, for it takes wisdom and cunning to make it through a maze, which he enjoys most in people. I'm totally using my religion skill to uh, play up uh, 
uh, tears, uh, you know, uh, aspects of wisdom and such that uh, that might convince him that tear is uh, would be do pretty well in a jungle himself. I've got a 16 on my religion roll. He listens and mostly respectfully for the most part, um, and he you know takes turns explaining about Ubtau. Um, however. One thing about Uptau is that he seems to have left, and Taban blames it on the arrival of the foreigners bringing their own gods and that type of thing. Oh, I get an 11 on my persuasion to agree that perhaps uh, Uptau has left, and with uh, with the resurgence of uh, gods such as Tyr in the area, he might want to consider uh, <laughs> covering all his bets. He is a gambler, after all. You don't seem to sway him. Ah, well. We've got the whole day. <laughs> All right. So, Twillin, after exploring for a while, you don't really learn anything else. <clears throat> okay. I basically bug some people and then head back toward that direction. Yeah, it seems like... Maybe my on... friends found out some stuff. In this city... This is a, a word that almost nobody has heard of, and not many people here, uh, the temples don't really raise many people from the dead, so nobody has experienced any problems with it. Hmm. See, that's what happens when you don't have a good temple of tear in town. People die and they stay dead. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Getting to Kaya's, okay. it is, like I said, it's a quiet inn. Uh, people are well behaved there. The innkeeper here is Kaya, and as you walk in, she greets you in common. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. How may I help you? Uh, is it just me, or is it the others you're talking to? This is the other three right now. And the uh, ears was heading over to the inn as well, um, so he is since he probably didn't see everybody else since they were on a side quest, he was waiting for them, and he kind of, as he sees them approach, pushes him himself away from the wall and, you know, joins them as they're walking in. Okay. They are accompanied by a very large human male, and when Kaya asks, my companions would like rooms. Give them your best, please. Ah, oh, would you like, uh... She kind of counts you four rooms. Hmm. Um, we can. Some I think of us we need a fifth, don't we? Do, uh, yes. Uh, is our other party member here with us? Not yet. Ah. Ears met you coming in, but Twillin has not yet. No, I meant. Um... Oh, ignore it for now. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, five rooms, I see. Very well. Uh, Do you have double beds? Well, actually, yeah, what would be the cost of this? Uh, each room is one gold piece per night. And that does oh. come with a meal in the evening. Oh, fair enough. Yep, we'll, we'll do a room each. Sure. Oh, I expect that the rest of this journey will be without privacy, so I would imagine today it would be nice to have at least one night, one more night with it. <clears throat> And Taban speaks up. And I will take a room also here so that I can be close. And she, you know, talks to him and agrees. And he seems to hand over a small pouch to her. Now, is there anything I can show you while you are in town? You seem new here. Hmm. So well, long? <laughs> we, we did get to see the... Uh... The, the dinosaur racing, although. So, hmm. yes, yes, there, there is a, uh, uh, at the docks, there was a, a, a gentleman there selling soul. Wait. <laughs> it's a type of fish. Oh, I see. Oh. Would you like some? Perhaps you... for lunch tomorrow. But, uh, um, maybe you know there what? are some harpers in town that might, uh, know something about this, uh, soul monger that we're looking for? Are there harpers here? Mm. I don't know. The humidity in the air, I think, does bad things to harps. Most of them carry uh, percussive instruments or uh, <laughs> small stringed instruments. Yes, there are, there are a few drummers and a, a few that play lutes and such. 
a looter. But, harps are harps are heavy. Why would anybody want to ah, carry yes, one of those looters. around? Looters sound like the kind of thing that we're going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about this? Uh, what about a fare that we would probably only find here, food-wise? Uh, that would be interesting to taste the local food that uh, we would probably never get to taste anywhere else. Oh, well, seafood is very prevalent. Mm. Kaya does uh, serve a nice, nice dinner. Does she? Okay. Well, then maybe we will hold off on that and we'll see. Uh, what other kind of things are there to do? Like I said, we saw the dinosaur racing. Is there anything else? Well, there's sometimes fights at the arena, although they are not as common anymore. Uh, occasionally, they are they were interrupted by undead at the gates, so getting undead? people... Uh, yes, skeletons, zombies... Which way to Gates? No, no, no. no. We're, we're not going to be just killing random undead. Oh, not, not right now. Did you did you hear the, the bells? I, I didn't. That, is there a bell whenever there's undead at the gate? Yes, yes. There's a, a, an alert to get people to safety. Oh, okay. See, if you hear the bell, then we can possibly do something. Not until then. I hope the bell doesn't ring. Well, we have shopping. We have... Bathhouse, although you oh. seem fairly clean. Yeah, we just arrived, so we're still pretty clean. Although your clothing is not colorful enough, I would recommend going to the dye works and having your clothes dyed. My brightness is very, very more, uh, very much appealing to the eyes. Well, we do plan on going out into the wild in a bit, so I don't know if wearing colorful clothes would be a good idea. Where would you suggest uh, we shop for jungle travel? How about that? All shop, all shopping happens, happens in the Grand Souk. Ah, well then let's go there. We should get some shopping, see what we can find. I say all, but it's one of three markets, but it is the biggest. If you want jewels, there is a different market for jewels. No, I don't think that's necessary. <clears throat> the Red Bazaar is where... The residents buy everyday needs, meat, vegetables, fruit, kind of like a grocer. But clothing, they do sell tropical clothing here. Okay, that might be useful. Probably something that walking in the, the humidity here and the heat is a bit not what we're used to. Yes, we can go there first. We are not far. Good. Uh, anyone who wishes to join us, obviously. I can join. And that's when Twillin oh. walks in. Ah, Twillin! Mm. Uh, probably accompanied by a gaggle of cats or something from, that he's been chatting with. Huh? Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we just got rooms. We did get a room for you as well. Um, and uh, we were about to go to the, uh, the market to get some more... Um, appropriate clothes for the traveling we may be doing, if you would like to join us. Uh, Quillen looks down at his clothing and wonders what's inappropriate about it, but... Um, it's a new land with new creatures and plants, and we want to blend uh, with I the environment. I, can go back. I guess I can go back to the market with you. Okay. Uh, room? I, I go up to the, my room real quick and drop off Basically, almost everything I have, with the exception of my armor and great sword. The rooms are not locked. They are numbered. Um, not in a numbering convention you're familiar with, but it's easy to tell which number is yours after having it explained. Um, on the inside of your room is a like a small rope, mini rope, that you tie shut from the inside. Also, in the hallway, though, there is a guard sitting on a chair watching. I choose not to leave my equipment and go with the group. <laughs> Oops. You don't trust the guard? No. Alright, so once everybody leaves, he takes you out, um, heads a little further eastward, and you are very close to the market, to the Red Bazaar. So he starts leading you there. Um, first he shows you a place where they sell very loose clothing. Okay. So yeah, we'll... Uh take a look and 
see if we can find things that are appropriate for jungle travel, given the suggestions of the shopkeeper, I would imagine. Most of it is very, very colorful, but yes. Is that normal for people traveling through the jungles to wear these colorful clothes? Uh, Are you asking the merchant? I assume he's asking Taban. Oh, yeah. Uh, It is not very common to travel through the jungles. It is very dangerous out there. Oh, I mean, we know this, but uh, sadly, um, our our goal is out there, and we have to go. Uh, Well, if if you are going out to the jungle, I would suggest a guide. But other than that, for clothing, he shows you a a selection of clothing, and and, an outfit is five silver pieces. Okay, fair enough. They have different, you know, loose hats, or wide-brimmed hats, rather, but everything is loose and breathes. And with the humidity just in this area, you can probably tell why. If they try to sell me a hat, I just kind of look at them like... Across the way, there is uh, a stand set up, kind of like a tent with a table. And somebody there is, in different languages, giving a slight spiel. And then he switches to a different language. You do not want to risk mad monkey fever. Get your insect repellent. Everybody should wear insect repellent. I look at Twillin at that note. The insects. Because that seems like a contradiction. Um, They carry disease. That is not necessary. No, mad monkey, insect. Two different things. (laughs) What do the local guide have to say about that? Did he go with us? Shopping? Oh, yeah, he's with, he's with you. Yeah, he's with us. Yeah. So these uh these insects are vicious, I hear. Oh yes. Well, and he slaps his arm and you know squashes a mosquito. I guess it depends on what you call vicious, but they are definitely plentiful and hungry. Mm. And I would imagine a little more dangerous out in the jungles than here. I would assume so. In fact, there may even be giant mosquitoes out in the jungle. Oh. At least the giant mosquitoes will be easier easier to see and kill. <sighs> All right. Are there any particular repellents that seem to work better in your, from your experience? Yeah, uh, we don't wish to get sold something that does not work. Most of them seem to work the same. The, it determines how you wish to use it. They Some sell an incense that will keep an area free for a few hours while it burns, but the best protection is uh, an ointment like they sell it in a small jar that lasts for a while. You put it on once a day. And it, it mm. keeps most of the bulk of the bugs away? Yes. Alright. Uh, then let us let us find this ointment. We'll, we'll use that. Although having a couple, a few of the uh, incense ones may not be that bad of an idea either. Just to be on the safe side. Quayothe controls the sale of insect repellents. That's why it's all the same. But uh, she she has a merchant, and he kind of looks around. Uh, down down this way, I think. All right, we'll follow. He leads you there. Ah, yes, yes, here. And oh, Taban, you back for more? Didn't we just sell you a gourd yesterday? Ah, uh, not for me, for my companions. Oh, are you new in town? Uh, yes, we are. We are. We are new. Oh, yes. And, it uh, is a good thing you came to me then. You don't want to spend too much time unprotected. Considering our plan is to actually head out into the jungles, I would imagine so. Well, how long are you going to be out in the jungles? She uh, unknown. Kind of takes this little wooden tray from underneath her table and sets it up. And there's uh, several, maybe one-inch cubes. These here, they they burn for about eight hours. These are a silver piece each. And then she pulls out a kind of like a heavier box. And these have small vials. These here, you can make last for couple weeks. These are a gold piece. Smear a little bit on. It doesn't take much and make sure you cover everywhere with it. 
So each one of those will be a couple of weeks. Hmm, one, two, hmm. How much do we estimate we might be out there for is the question. The, it's the thing that costs the gold, what do you say? Is it an ointment or? The yeah. ointment, yes. The, uh, the, 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 yeah, actually I think we should all take at least two. That was my thinking. To be on the safe side. I hope yes, that we aren't out see. there for as long as that, but it's a jungle. We could get ourselves lost. I'll try to make that not happen. So, uh, I think the uh, the big question would be whether any of us took the Helm of Teleportation as a rare magical item. I haven't selected one yet, although that was that was on my list of possibilities. <laughs> Because if somebody does, we might not be in the jungle that long. <laughs> well, we still have to find a thing, but yeah. Sure, but it cut our time in half. Right. Uh, um, I'm going to buy a gourd and a couple of blocks, like, what, four blocks of incense? Uh, what, the, the, the incense you said they'll do for, like, eight hours each one? Yeah, but yes. we, could, we could burn it at night. Yeah, no, 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 I agree. Um, the uh, the the salve is works for 24 hours and it's waterproof, so it won't wash off in the rain. Okay. The incense we will don't... burn in a 20 foot radius area. So we don't Dark. really need to use it at night. No, yeah. you don't really need to use Normally. it at night. Oh, so the gourd will. So we're just doing the gourd, everybody. No, no, no. We're we're gonna do the ointment, right? The oint, the gourd. Wait, is the gourd doing ointment? Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting myself yeah, confused. The gourd... The gourd is what holds the ointment. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. All right, all right, yeah. Um, but we should get oh. two each of those. That puts us out there for a month. That should mm -hmm. be reasonable, hopefully. Yeah. Do you want to grab a couple extra just in case? Yeah, just in case. So two each. Was it how many we got? Uh, five. So and twelve. We'll do fourteen total. The weight on these is negligible, so you don't really, unless you want to start carrying like 50 of them. No, we just, carry got a, it. Yeah, well, well, we just got a bunch of gold from our deal with this guy anyway, so it works out. So, ha, we're just spending that money anyways. So, we'll um, so yeah, a resale so, business in the jungle. Yeah, so 14. Oh, yes, who took the gem, by the way? Uh, uh, I, I gave it to Nexus. Yeah, I have it. Okay. Um,. So this should be worth around 50 gold pieces, supposedly, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's 14 for that, so we can go a bit crazy on it. Uh, we will buy some of the incense. I just have a bad feeling that maybe that's a good idea anyway, so I'll do four. Let's see, four. They each do eight hours, so four. Let's see. So if we do eight, it's going to be four gold, ten. Uh, we'll do ten for the incense. Okay. So that uh, so that'll be five gold for that, fourteen gold for that. So it's nineteen gold. Um, Ten blocks of incense will only be one gold. No. Well, you said silver. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh wait. Yeah. You're right. Isn't it? Oh. Okay. How how heavy is the incense though? Negligible. Negligible as well. Okay. You don't know double that. I'm not playing. I'm not messing with bugs. <laughs> Seriously, guys, before I even become encumbered, I can carry 255 pounds. I'm at 150 right now. <laughs> oh, okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> Here you go. Let's just start handing you all the incense and all the. I, I, I was expected to be the pack mule. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll double that then. Okay. We'll do 20 because I don't wish to get bitten by bugs. Somebody, somebody should ask for a bag of holding or a. Handy haversack. I was thinking uh, about portable hole. Yeah, unfortunately, those weren't there. Yeah. Um, Taban, while he's here, does buy another vial of salve for himself, just in case. Uh, I I don't know what you may need out in the jungle, though. So before you buy too much, you may wish to acquire a guide. They may know better. Ah, that's a good point. Thank you. Yes, we should. Do this that. is true. Where would we find a guide? Uh, some hang out at Kaya's. Uh, some also hang out at the Thundering Lizard. Um, or you could go to... Uh, kind of thinks about it for a minute. One of the merchant princes. They work for him. He would be able to tell you most of them. I don't know if we're visiting the merchant princes. Um, 
Is there one that you would strongly suggest? Somebody that you've maybe worked with before? I, I've never worked with any of them. Oh, I see. Well, how do you get your supplies then? They just come in. Who does do? Does anyone go out in the jungles to get these supplies or no? A uh, few do. Most of the exotic I- items sold in the the Grand Souk come via ships. But th- there are okay. occasional people that will bring back grung designed items or or even some of the the. There is a, a tribe of goblins. They they wear these wooden masks, and occasionally people will bring some of those in and sell for decorations. I see. All right, we will we will consider that. Thank you. But yes, uh, jo- Jobal, Jobal, he is the one that the guides work for. If you wish, I could take you to his manor, and you may seek an audience there, and he may be able to inform you more, or you could wait in some of the, the inns. That, like I said, they do sometimes go in there looking for business. Hmm. Speaking to a manor, Interesting. Well, uh, um, why not? Uh, unless anyone has any uh, complaints about it, we, we could go visit this um, lord of sorts, right? You could say that. All right. I give that a big then, uh, yes, uh, we would appreciate that if you could arrange a meet. 